June 2019, British Columbia, Canada. Businessman Jim LaRock is enjoying a day on the shore of Lake Skaha when suddenly... I don't know where I just heard a swoosh, swoosh, swoosh sound. He scrambles for his phone. And I was like, oh my God, hopefully I can get this on video because no one's ever going to believe me about this. And as I was recording it, my daughter's like, what is it? What is it? What is it? Tate, what is it? Let's get a closer look. It's that series of small waves moving as if they're being caused by something serpentine undulating below the surface. Jim believes he's just captured more than waves. He says this is the elusive creature known as Ogopogo. In my head, I was like, that thing is massive and it's gotta be something that big. It must be the Ogopogo they talked about for, for years around here. Just an hour north in Lake Okanagan in July of 2018, a similar video. You see that? Yes. A teenager spots what he thinks might just be the mysterious lake monster. What the heck? What is that? I have no clue. In this footage, you can clearly see more than waves. It looks like it could be the creature's dorsal side, and it's moving. I think this is some of the best lake monster footage I've ever seen. Field researcher Ken Gerhardt says First Nation tribes have described the beast as long and serpentine larger than anything that should live in a freshwater lake. This is exactly what hundreds of eyewitnesses of the Ogopogo have described. And it's actually very similar to descriptions of the Loch Ness Monster and other lake monsters around the world. Ogopogo is said to have a horse-like head, could be dark green, brown, like a serpentine, snake-like body, a split tail, a real, like, almost a snake monster. The locals and some natives uh, historically thought Ogopogo was like a spirit of the water and it required sacrifice. So they would drop chickens and small animals into the water before they crossed the lake so that they wouldn't be eaten themselves. Some have also speculated that the Ogopogo might be a surviving member of a primitive species of whale from the late Eocene period, which existed approximately 35 million years ago. But here's the question. Are these videos actual proof of Ogopogo's existence? Let's take a closer look. The first thing that human eye sees when they see this is potentially a creature moving through the water. Marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger is well versed in hydrology, the study of waves. To determine whether this could be some kind of whale or fish, she looks for a trailing wake, the kind a tail would make. I don't see any form of back and forth propelling motion towards the end of the series of humps. What about a sea serpent of some kind? The humps of those waves are the clue. If this were an animal propelling itself through the water, we would see these bumps move up and down in sequence. Instead, what you see are the peaks of the waves all hitting at the same time. So this is what Dr. Conger's talking about. Take a look at these waves. Here, 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 here. They're all peaking at about the same time. Conger says that's proof this is no animal. It's what happens seasonally when lake layers of different temperatures and depths pass over each other. In fact, it has a name, the Ogopogo effect. This is a very basic propagating wave making its way through the water rather than a biological animal. But she's got a different take on the other footage. What's compelling about this video is it clearly shows a large object in the middle of Lake Okanagan. That's right. Conger believes there's actually something in the water. Again, the waves are the proof. At times, you can see what appear to be different structures or humps that appear throughout the image as it moves. What would make this video even more compelling is if the object that I was seeing was swimming against the current that we see in the video. This thing is going with the current, which widens the range of possibilities. I can conclude that this is either an object, like a log, that's rotating as it moves through the water, or this is an animal that's moving through the water column. And so to me, the footage is definitely genuine, but it's the conclusion of what we're seeing that is undefined for me. As for me, I believe underwater discoveries are happening every day. 
So it would be short-sighted to suggest that it's impossible for an unknown animal to exist. And that seems to be the case in at least one of these videos, as those sequential waves indicate. Our verdict? An unknown living animal is lurking in the waters of British Columbia. The video you're about to see might look like a monster movie, but we're going to tell you up front here, this is no visual effect. It's very real, very gross, and very hard to identify. It's May 2017 in Indonesia's Maluku province. Locals are heading out to work when they make a gigantic, gruesome discovery floating in the water. Cell phone video shows them examining the rotting corpse of a 50-foot dead sea creature that has somehow washed ashore. Here's a look from another angle. The formless blob is not only immense, it looks like it's coated in some sort of white, shaggy hair. What kind of animal has hair like that? It seems like it's something that shouldn't exist. And in fact, if this animal were terrestrial, it wouldn't be able to exist because of its sheer body mass. Folklore is chock full of legendary sea creatures as big as this carcass. The ancient Hebrew Leviathan, the Jormungandr of Norse mythology, and the Kraken, a kind of giant octopus, so big it was described as a floating island in Viking eyewitness accounts. Oh man, I bet that stinks there. But field researcher Cliff Barrickman says these carcasses have their own name. Globsters. Globsters are cool in every way. It's part blob, it's part glob, it's part lobster. I mean, how awesome is that? Globsters have been turning up on shores around the globe for years. This one, known as the Cherbourg carcass, was discovered in France in 1934. But what to make of this one? Globsters have also washed up on beaches in Florida, New Zealand, Bermuda, Canada, and South Africa. But they've never been spotted in the water alive. So what exactly are we looking at here? Let's turn to our analysts. Wildlife biologist Lucy Eckersley first focuses on that amorphous mass of tissue. I think these could be mistaken for lots of different sea animals. And because they look kind of squishy, you might think that they look like a giant octopus or a giant squid. A giant squid? But look. We can see some exposed bone. This video clearly shows this creature has a spine, so it can't be an invertebrate. Next question, what to make of that hair? What looks like hair across this creature is actually fibers of collagen. Marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger says that collagen a protein that provides structure to skin, bones, and tendons is the biggest clue. When components of the body begin to break down, the collagen begins to emerge. And because collagen doesn't break down as quickly as other tissues, these globsters can start to take on a hairy appearance that you wouldn't expect or be able to explain if you weren't familiar. So what was this before the sea decomposed it into a globster? This is actually pretty typical of what I would expect to see in regards to the carcass of a large whale. You can see some striations on the bottom of this object, and that is what we would expect to see in the mouth cavity of a large whale, such as a blue whale. And Conger should know. As you can see, she's been up close and personal with globsters herself. To witness firsthand one of these animals at close distance to the human mind is almost unsurmountable. You're looking at the scale of an animal that's bigger than anything that's ever lived on the planet. And so to unpracticed eyes, they seem absolutely impossible. Ultimately, this story is about the power of the sea. In this case, it's power to transform the bodies of dead animals into something unrecognizable. And once that hair was explained to us, it became clear. Our verdict, the globster is not the kraken or a sea monster. It's a dead whale. The Inuit culture of Alaska is rich with ancient tales of magical and fearsome water creatures. Were those accounts just myths or an early form of field research? Before you answer, Watch this. October 2016, Craig McKay of Alaska's Bureau of Land Management is overlooking the Chena River in Fairbanks when he notices something extremely peculiar in the water. 
It looks to be around 20 to 25 feet long, and when we zoom in, it appears to be swimming against the current. I looked down and saw this really bizarre object. It was much larger than anything I'd seen in the river, and it was undulating or swinging back and forth in the current. It was really spooky. Given the location of this discovery, field researcher Ken Gerhardt says we should consider the local folklore. In Alaska, we do have a number of legends of water creatures. The Inuit culture talks about something called the Tizharuk, which is a long serpentine animal with a long head, a prominent tail fin. There are many tales of the Tizharuk actually snatching people off of bridges or out of canoes and, and devouring them voraciously. Gerhardt says descriptions of the Tizharuk vary, but the most terrifying form is said to be a giant eel-like creature with transparent skin, which not only allows observers to see still digesting victims, but also makes the creature less visible when stalking its prey. In addition, we have the Lake Iliamna monster, which is also known as the Jigignac. This particular monster has been reported several times. It's described as being 10 to 30 feet in length with a torpedo-shaped body and kind of a dull aluminum color. So, you know, we have to ask the question, could this be related to those stories? Early stories of the Jig Ignac described fish-like monsters traveling in groups and attacking canoes. So is that or one of its descendants what we're looking at here? Let's let the experts decide. Marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger says if this thing were a snake, it's unlikely to have accumulated snow on his back. And as for serpents... There's no water snakes in Alaska. This is because reptiles and amphibians are exotherms. They're reliant on the environment to maintain their body heat, and there really isn't enough heat to allow these species to persist in this area. So Dr. Conger turns for clues to the hydrology of the scene, the motion of the water. It seems to kind of be moving back and forth through the water, as you would expect an animal with a tail to be swimming against the current. But hold on, look again. When the video zooms out a little bit, you can actually see that this object doesn't seem to be moving forward at all. Rather, it's just fixed in place and being hit by the moving current downriver. Therefore, I conclude this isn't a biological object. Rather, it's some type of debris, like a piece of rope or fishing line encased in ice. So there you have it. Our verdict, based on Dr. Conger's hydrology analysis, this is a frozen rope. But sightings of Alaskan lake and river monsters continue to this day. Are they all misidentifications? Or is there really something down there? We'll keep looking for more video until we have an answer. Millions of people head to the Florida Gulf Coast each year to enjoy good weather and water sports. But sometimes the most relaxing offshore expeditions can turn terrifying in an instant, especially when a large, unexpected visitor splashes onto the scene. October 2013, South Florida, off the coast of Sanibel Island in the Gulf of Mexico. A couple is enjoying a clear day on their fishing boat when they suddenly notice something camera-worthy. Ah! What the f*** is that? Go, go, I don't know what that is, Dan. Just hold on. Let's see that again. The woman heard in the video describes the creature as a giant snake-like monster, longer than 20 feet and as thick as a large utility pole. Field researcher Ken Gerhardt says reported sea monster encounters in this area date back centuries. The most famous happened in 1962. So historically, there have been accounts of monsters and sea serpents in the Gulf of Mexico. Perhaps one of the most dramatic involves a man named Edward Brian McCleary. McCleary and three of his young companions uh, decided to take a raft out to the wreckage of a ship known as the USS Massachusetts. And out of the water came this dinosaur-like, a plesiosaur type of creature, something from prehistoric times. And according to McCleary, this creature essentially killed his three companions and uh, devouring them or drowning them in fairly close proximity to where this video is alleged to have been shot. 
This clip has logged more than 1 million views since it was first posted. Take a look right here. It looks scaly and like maybe it's coiled around something. The splash is quick, but it's definitely indicating something large. To help us get some clarity, let's ask our experts. Before I would entertain the idea that this might be some sort of unknown sea monster, I would point out the fact that there are many species of known large animals that live in this area. Based on the size of the boat and its distance from the alleged creature, our experts agree it could be as long as 30 feet. Some people conjecture that this could be an oarfish. The oarfish is the longest bony fish on the planet, with some specimens reaching 30 feet. But Dr. Conger says there's a problem. Oarfish are usually found at depths around 600 feet. Most of the time when we do see them at the surface, it's because they've already been deceased and they are either floating or washed up on shore. Conger also rules out many of the other marine mammals known to roam the shores of the Gulf. This is a really large tubular looking animal that's pretty dark in color. And anything like a whale or a seal wouldn't be as undulating and as distinct as we see in this video. Ultimately, it's the moment when it emerges that has Conger convinced. I think the most likely possibility for this video is actually some type of a large snake that's eating another type of marine animal. When we see a large constrictor species in the water consuming a prey, it will often wrap itself around that prey and spin through the water, and this video seems to be a bit indicative of that. Conger says this isn't just a big snake, but possibly one of the biggest a green anaconda. They get as large as 30 feet with a 12-inch diameter and weigh more than 550 pounds. Imagine that the next time you swim in Florida. So there you have it. This is most likely a large snake preying on a smaller sea animal, most likely a fish, though anacondas can eat animals as big as jaguars. The legend of the Loch Ness Monster has been told and retold for centuries. But that's far from the only body of water in the region that may be shrouded in mystery. Loch Foyle, a large tidal estuary in County Donegal, Ireland, is only 370 miles away. But on the surface, it may have something else in common with Loch Ness. April 2013, Connell Malarkey, a student in Northern Ireland, is in the middle of filming a school project on Loch Foyle when he spots something unusual in the water nearby. Uh, the shaky 59 second video shows a dark object of significant size moving rapidly along the surface of Loch Foyle before submerging beneath the water. The creature and its movement were smooth and silent. All I could hear was the bubbling of the water as it breached its surface. Let's take a closer look at this thing. At one point in the clip, as it appears to swim by a boat, the wake this mysterious creature creates looks as long as the boat in the background, which is about 25 feet. I'm not going after whatever that was. It had no scent. All I could smell was the fear from the cameraman behind me. I never believed in such strange phenomena, but upon encountering that strange creature that day, it completely changed my opinion of it forever. Field researcher Cliff Barrickman says recent research at Loch Ness may tell us what we're seeing here at Loch Foyle. Scientists have recently tested the water of Loch Ness in hopes of finding some sort of reptile DNA. Well, they didn't get any, but what they did get is an extraordinary amount of eel DNA. So if the Loch Ness Monster is an eel, maybe that's what we're seeing here. When it comes to alleged lake monsters and sea serpents, field researcher Ken Gerhardt says there is one thing almost all of them have in common. Virtually all of the locations where these things are reported to live lie within the same lines of latitude in the Northern Hemisphere, from 40 to 60 degrees north, with an especially dense concentration along the 50 degree latitude line. And so that actually builds a pretty strong case that we could be dealing with something unknown to science that prefers this particular region of the planet. The fact that Loch Foyle also connects directly to the North Atlantic Ocean only adds to the many possibilities of what we could be seeing in this video. So another thing worth considering is that we, what we could be looking at here is a cetacean or whale that has perhaps swum into this particular loch on this one occasion. There are certain species of whales, for example, beluga whales, pilot whales, and even on occasion, killer whales, 
that will travel from the ocean up into freshwater lakes searching for food. Could that be the so-called Loch Foyle monster's real identity? Let's check with our experts. First off, marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger addresses the notion that the Loch Foyle video could be an eel sighting. This object is clearly not an eel. Eels are really dark animals that undulate through the water when they are at the surface. And this object is a really large, roundish lump with a lot of it exposed above the surface. And that, to me, really strongly indicates that this is not an eel. While Dr. Conger acknowledges that Loch Foyle's direct access to the ocean provides a multitude of possibilities for what this alleged sea creature could be, she also doubts this is a wayward whale. This isn't a whale. When we see whales above the water, we typically would see a blowhole and the whale respiring. So we would see a sort of mist coming from the object. This particular object or alleged creature doesn't seem to be exhibiting any types of behaviors. Rather, it's just statically moving through the water. For Conger, a more detailed analysis of hydrography raises serious doubts. The way that this object moves through the water tells me that it's being pulled rather than being propelled on its own. That's because it's cutting a straight line through the water column without any undulation, any disturbances in the water. Conger thinks the object may be getting pulled by a boat that's out of frame the entire time. With that red flag waving, we take the footage to our video forensic expert, Michael Primo. I do have some concerns with what we're seeing and the way that it travels in the water. From the frame-by-frame -frame analysis, I don't see anything from this object that looks like it's moving or flopping around or, let's say, alive. Primo then uncovers other details that sound more alarm bells. This was allegedly captured in the area of Loch Foyle. And through examination of the ridgeline in the background, we were able to make determinations. It was actually recorded 130 miles away near a village called Hoth in the Dunleary Harbor. OK, we can say it's not an eel, not a whale. It's not even moving like an animal. The speculation of a tow line, and though we can't prove it, it seems clear there's been some deception about where the footage was shot. Our verdict, this is a prime example of cake tarb. That's Irish for an American term we can't say on TV. But it rhymes with bull spit. <laughs>